Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 6.6, .6, Modeling with Trigonometric Functions. So basically we're going to do some word problems. If you want to see the setup of some of these problems, um, some of the real life applications, you can click on the link right there. Um, I'll take you to some animations on that. Otherwise, we're going to do some word problems. So a boy is at the surface measuring his distance from the seafloor. Every 40 minutes is shown in the chart below. A boy is one of those um, things that floats on the surface of the water. So you'd have water and something floating. You know, it goes up and down. So we're modeling the height of the boy using a sinusoidal function. The first thing we want to do is look for the max or the min, uh, or we would look for the axis if we could. The max or the min obviously would be cos. We're going to model with cos, and if we could find the axis, we would use sine. Um, so in this case, it's going to be easier to find the max and the min. You can see here that I have two minimums that are pretty close together, um, 66 and 65. You know, we seem to be cycling through, so that's going to be our minimum. And uh, I choose this as the minimum, you know, and knowing that they're not exactly the same value because it's supposed to be, you know, a real life situation, so you don't get perfect data in the real world. And then we've got 102 and 101-ish, which seem to be our maximums. So I'll label those in there. So I'm just going to choose my min as 66 and my max as 102. Uh, I wanted to choose the ones that are... Um, like when I subtract them, it's going to be even because then I can just divide by 2 and it'll be easy because I know what my formulas are going to be. Uh, but you could have um, averaged them or you could choose the other ones. It's up to you. Um, and then I'm going to find the, p the period. The period goes from the min to the min or the max to the max. So I'm just going to go like this. And so I can see that my period is going to be uh, 280 minus 40. So you're doing the x values. So it's 240. So right away that tells me my k because I know that I'm going to use uh, y equals a uh, cos k x minus d plus c. I'm choosing cos because I've got my min and my max. So I can find my k right away using the period. k is equal to 2 pi over the period or in other words 2 pi over 240, which will be pi over 120. So that gives me my k. My amplitude is going to equal max minus min divided by 2. That's the formula. So 102 minus 66, which is 36, divided by 2, 18. The axis is max plus min divided by 2. So 102 plus 66 um, which gives me 168 divided by 2 gives me 84. So now I have my A and my C. I just have to figure out what my phase shift is. And the phase shift depends on which, uh, which uh, function you want to use. So I'm going to use the minimum, so that means I'm going to use negative cos. If I use negative cos, that means D is equal to 40, which is the... Uh, x value, or if I wanted to use positive cos, I could use d as 160, and it's up to you which one you want to do. I'm going to actually write both since I've found them already. So y is equal to negative 18 cos uh, pi over 120 x minus 40 plus 84, or if I use positive cos, y is equal to one eight, or sorry, 18 cos pi over 120, x minus 160, plus 84. Okay, so just like before, the amplitude stays the same, the k stays the same, the axis stays the same, it's just a phase shift and the uh, function itself that changes. So if you're wondering why the distance when you're going around a circle is a sinusoidal function, uh, we do have an angular velocity that is constant, but the distance from the middle is changing all the time. That's because as we move around, well, if you have a clock, it's the easiest to see. As you move around the clock, um, as we get to the top, we're actually moving more over than we are up and down. So that's why you get uh, 
this part of the curve right here when you get to the top and as we get to the 3 and the 9 we're actually moving more down um, than over so that's why you get this uh, very steep part of the curve so this distance is going to be the minimum distance from you know the bottom of the clock to the floor and this distance here to the middle is the axis and of course from the from the bottom to the very top would be the maximum so that is how we find those distances and how we find you know our sinusoidal function so let's look at this question. Hanman began riding a bike and noticed that gum was stuck to the wheel. If the gum was at the bottom of the tire, which has a diameter of 70 centimeters when the ride began, and he is traveling 15 kilometers per hour, model the vertical height of the gum as a function of meters to seconds. So the first thing we can do is find the amplitude. We know the amplitude is equal to the radius of a wheel, so that's going to be 0 0.35 meters. Um, and we know that the axis is going to be equal to wherever the axle is mounted. Um, and because we know that it is a bike wheel and he's uh, traveling on the ground in theory, then um, his axle is going to be mounted exactly one radius away from the ground. So it's also equal to 0 0.35 meters, which is our C. Um, and also tells us that the gum was at the bottom of the tire when it started. So that tells us it's at the bottom of the tire that's the minimum. So we're going to be using negative cos and we won't have any phase shift. So the only thing we have to worry about now is the period. Period is equal to the time for one revolution, right? So we're going to have to figure out what the seconds per revolution are. Um, so we're going to start with our 15 kilometers per hour and we want to, first of all, we're going to go to meters per second. So let's do that conversion. We get a thousand meters for every kilometer and we have an hour is 3600 seconds. So you can see that I'm going to be able to cancel my units here and I'm going to move all the numbers to the front and all the, uh, all the units to the back. Um, and then I know that I want to be, I want to have a revolution. So I have seconds and revolutions. And I know one revolution is equal to one circumference, right? Uh, so let's write that in. One revolution equals one circumference. And the circumference is going to be 2 pi r or pi d. So that's pi times 0 0.7 meters. And you can see that my meters are going to cancel. And the only units I'm going to have left are revolutions and seconds. So let's take all those numbers and multiply them together. I'm going to get 15 times 1,000 divided by 3600 divided by 0.7 gives us um, approximately 5.95 over pi revolutions per second. Um, I want time for one revolution so that's actually going to be um, revolutions over seconds wait, seconds over revolutions. Oops. So we're going to have to turn this puppy over. It's gonna actually going to be pi over 5.95 seconds per revolution. Um, the reason I'm leaving the pi in there is because I know that when I find k, I'm going to have to cancel it out. So I am leaving it in there, but you could, you could multiply it in and that'd be fine as well. Um, so now that I have my period, which is pi over 5.95 seconds for every re one revolution, I can find my k. So k is equal to 2 pi over the period. So that's 2 pi over pi over 5.95. So it's going to be, um, type into your calculator, approximately 11.90. Okay, so that gives us our k. So now we have all of our parts and uh, we can write the equation. So y equals negative 0 0.35 cos uh, 11.9x plus 0 0.35. That's my c. And there you go. We're done. We can also just do a little sketch of this guy. Um, so I'm just going to choose a nice thin line for my three parts. So I get my maximum, my axis, and actually my uh, minimum is the x-axis. So I could just 
draw that on there and we're going to do that. Then I know that uh, this number is going to be 0 0.35 meters. This is going to be 0 0.7 meters. And I start at the bottom and I'm going to go up and I'm trying to split this into four equal parts so actually I can just draw them along your axis if you've drawn it already and it looks like this and connect your dots in a curvy and attractive manner you could use a different color if it's unclear okay so then we do our x values so um, actually I'm going to find my period in uh, numbers as well because it's just a little bit easier so this is going to be 0.53 seconds per revolution so this point right here is 0.53 and so we would have to divide by half in order to get this point so here is 0.53 divided by 2 just do it on my calculator it gives me 0.26 ish so I'll label it 0.26 in order to find this point I'm going to do 0.53 divided by 4 because it's a quarter of the period see I have 1, 2, 3, 4 parts so 0.53 divided by 2 is approximately 0.13 so that gives me that point and this point here is going to be um, 0.26 plus 0.13 of course because that just is 0.13 apart so that gives me 0 0.39 so this is a proper model of our equation and here we have the equation okay Ben is riding a horse around a circular ring that is 1.2 kilometers in diameter sorry this question always just makes me laugh I'm gonna giggle a little bit I think um, so he starts across the ring from an observer Brahm and Braham is 0 0.2 kilometers outside of the ring. Ben is intercepted after an angle of 37 pi over 4, so that's actually his central angle. So as he travels around the ring, the central angle that he has completed is 37 pi over 4. Um, and he's ridden for 20 minutes. Model his horizontal distance from the observer as a function of meters 2 minutes. Um, and by horizontal distance, we mean like, let's say Brahm is hiding behind a hedge over here then uh, it's the distance from that hedge, okay? So um, so the first thing that we could find is the amplitude. We know the amplitude is going to be the radius, and the radius is 1.2 divided by 2, so 0 0.6 kilometers. Uh, and it says to do it in meters to minutes, so we're going to have to convert that to 600 meters. So just be wary of your units. The axis is going to be... Um, from the middle so it's where the axle is right that's the middle here so this distance here is 0 0.6 and then we add the 0 0.2 and that gives us the axis so it's 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 kilometers uh, which gives us 800 meters okay so that's the axis and then we're going to have to find his period because we know he starts at the furthest most point from Brahm so um, that tells us that we're using positive cos and that we have a phase shift of zero right um, because we're starting at the maximum so let's find the period the period is going to be again the time uh, for one revolution um, so we could find the speed and then do it that way but I think the quicker way is to just say well I have 37 pi over 4 uh, rads for 20 minutes and I know that I have um, one revolution every 2 pi radians so I'll use that conversion right so we'll cancel these pi's um, and 37 over 4 times 20 times 2 um, should give us 37 over 80 minutes revolutions per minute so we want to know minutes per revolution so it's going to be 80 over 37 minutes per revolution like that we just flip it upside down so that gives us our period so the last thing we need to find is our k k is equal to 2 pi over the period so 2 pi oops, over 80 over 37 uh, which gives us 37 pi over 40 
which is fine. That's an exact value, so it's better to have exact values. So now we can write our equation. Actually, let's do a little diagram as well. So we'll draw our maximum, our axis, and our minimum. And we also know that our x is going to be down here somewhere. Actually, I'll move it down a little bit more so it's a little bit more uh, to scale. And then we'll draw our y-axis. So he starts at the top, and so this is the maximum. And we know that um, this distance from the bottom is 0 0.2 kilometers, so 200 kilometers, the axis was 800 meters, and the furthest he can get, the amplitude was 600 meters, so uh, 800 plus 600 will give us 1400. You can see it's still not to scale, but that's okay. So again, uh, trying to separate into four equal parts, and then we will just draw our reference points and connect the dots in a curvy and attractive manner. Always take a break if you feel like you're going to get out of control. Okay, um, we finished the period, which was 80 over 37 minutes. Um, and then to find each of these, again, we're dividing by 2. So 80 over 37 divided by 2 is 40 over 37. So that gives us this point right here, 40 over 37. And if we do 80 over 37 divided by 4, we're going to get 20 over 37. That gives us this point right here, 20 over 37. And then we can just add these two together to get the third point, which is 60 over 37. Okay, so now we have our x values and our y values, and we've modeled it using the graph. Let's write that equation out. y is equal to, I'm using positive cos, uh, and my amplitude was... 600, I believe, yes, 600. So 600 cos um, k 37 pi over 40. This does the conversion to radians for us, times x plus 800, which is our axis. And there is our equation, here is our graph, and we're done. So basically all we've done today was find the equation and draw the graph for these uh, word problems. Um, so I hope that helped. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon.